Want to give your dated bathroom, kitchen, or laundry room a refresh? In this video, we'll show you how to install ceramic tile flooring yourself. Ready? Let's go. Before you get started, here are a few things you'll need. The tile you choose will impact the size and types of tools you'll be using, like your trowel, spacers, glue, and more. Make sure you plan ahead. Ceramic tile can be installed on various types of subfloors, but the most common and preferred surfaces are concrete, cement board, and plywood. Before installation, you'll need to get the room ready by removing all baseboards and doors. Trim the door frame. Place the tile against the door frame and make a mark 1 16th of an inch above it, then cut. The tile should slide easily under the cut. Now that the room prep is done, we're ready to begin. Make sure the subfloor surface is clean, dry, and level. We recommend the plywood subfloor be at least one and one quarter of an inch thick. Hold the plywood sheets in place by screwing into the joists. Make sure there is a screw every six inches. Look out for any existing screws and add more as needed. These will ensure your floors won't shift and tiles won't crack. Among other things, uncoupling membranes waterproof your floors, which is ideal for bathrooms and laundry rooms. First, measure your room's length and width and mark these measurements on the membrane. With your utility knife, make any necessary cuts so the membrane completely covers the subfloor. You'll also need to trim this underlayment so it comfortably fits around the base of the toilet, a bathtub, or pipes. Before laying the membrane, be sure to sweep the area and wipe down any dusty parts with a damp sponge. Mix up your mortar in a bucket. Spread and smooth the mortar in a thin layer going section by section with the flat side of your trowel. Using the notched side of your trowel, create ridges in the mortar. Make sure these ridges run in the same direction. Now, lay your membrane on top. Using the grout float or wood block, press the membrane into the mortar over the whole floor so that it adheres properly. No dry time necessary, you're ready to move on to the next step. Before you begin installation, it's a good idea to plan and test the layout. Set your tiles down on the floor, arranging them in a desired pattern and placement. You don't have to cover the entire floor. Just one or two horizontal and vertical rows should do the trick. Center the tiles in the space to ensure equal cuts on both sides. To avoid awkward cuts, simply shift the tiles a little. Don't forget to insert spacers between your tiles. Then, use your level to create straight reference lines with a permanent marker. Now for the fun part. The next three steps should be done simultaneously. Apply mortar, lay tiles, and make cuts as you go to avoid walking on freshly laid tiles. Do this two or three tiles at a time. Time to mix your mortar. The package instructions can help with that. Spread a first layer of mortar enough to fill the membrane's indentations. Once you're done, spread another layer on top. This thickness is necessary to create trowel lines. Holding your trowel at a 45-degree angle, create ridges in a mortar using the notched edge. Again, you want your ridges traveling in the same direction. Make sure to use the right trowel size for your tiles. You should also use a 1 half inch by 1 half inch trowel for tiles that are larger than 12 by 24 inches. Follow your reference lines closely, then gently lay down your tiles. For tiles larger than 12 inches on any side, we suggest applying a thin coat of mortar on the back. Press down on the tiles, rocking gently back and forth perpendicular to the trowel lines so they glue snugly in place. Insert tile spacers to get even steven joints. Use your level as you go to make sure that your tiles are all at the same height. Lightly tap on any uneven tiles with a rubber mallet. You could also use a leveling system. Check out our how-to. Most of the time, you'll need to cut a tile to fit into the gap between the wall and the end of a row. You want to take several measurements in case your wall isn't perfectly straight. From those measurements, subtract the width of the expansion joint and desired spacing. Not sure what tool to use to make cuts? We got you. Remember, you should always wear protective equipment when operating power tools. A tile cutter is one of the easiest and cheapest ways to make straight cuts. 
Mark a tile where you need to cut. Align the middle of the tile cutter with that mark. Glide its cutting wheel across the tile closely and steadily following that line using firm pressure. Then, simply apply pressure with the breaker foot. Wet saws are another great option because they can cut through many different types of material. To use, line up a tile so that it's square to the cutting fence and flat on the cutting surface. Slowly push the tile towards the blade. Watch your fingers. Lastly, you can also use a grinder for cutting tiles. Secure the tile face down on a scrap piece of plywood using clamps. Trace along your measurements with the grinder. Work slowly and steadily. Grinders are the go-to power tool for cutting tile around pipes. When you are finished tiling, steer clear of the surface for at least 24 hours or as long as the package instructions recommend. Remove the spacers. Use a utility knife or long nose pliers if needed. Make sure that there isn't any mortar blocking the joints or overflowing on the sides. If there is any excess, you can remove it with a putty knife. Clean the tiles with a damp sponge to wipe off any residue or dirt. This will also make it easier to spread the grout. Let's mix up the grout. Follow the package instructions to know how much water you'll need. The texture of grout you're aiming for is light and creamy, just like peanut butter. It shouldn't be too runny or liquidy, nor should it be stiff or thick. Pour your grout right onto the tiles, then work, work, work it into the joints with a rubber float. Go section by section, holding your float at a 45 degree angle. Clean off the excess grout with a damp sponge as you go. Make sure you're rinsing the sponge often. Wipe it again a good two or three times for that perfect finish. Just remember to replace your dirty water with clean water every time you do. Have two buckets of clean water handy so you can switch from one to the other. If you notice that some spots are missing grout, just go in and add some more. Before you can walk on the flooring, let it dry. The product packaging will indicate how long you should wait. Clean the floor with a dry cloth. Put the moldings and doors back in place. You're ready to lay down ceramic tiles like a pro. For the complete list of materials and detailed steps, hit the link in the caption below. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and visit our website for more helpful DIY content.